Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 22 of what if Naruto was given a second chance. Remember to get this one to 300 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends in social media platform. And also go ahead and enjoy the new episode of what if Naruto was disowned by F1. And I also post a new episode of what if Naruto was a godly mage on this channel. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy. And over on Anime King, I also post a new episode of What If Naruto. Learn the clone secret in the beginning. So go ahead and enjoy it as well. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what is going to begin this new episode? Begin the intro. So the last time we left off, Naruto created a clone, as he placed a ceiling tag on his and the clone's forehead, a ceiling art that is so powerful not even the Sharingan could see through the illusion. As Itachi and Kisame were surprised when Kisame old master that he killed and took Samihata away from and Madara Uchiha stepped out of the room, as they were told to follow them as they headed off. Sakura had woken up as she didn't hear anything outside, the place sounded too quiet because she didn't hear any crickets or anything. As she went through and looked through the door, she saw that Naruto and Sasuke's door was wide open and she went to go and check. As she quickly rushed to call Kakashi, but no matter how she knocked on the door, he didn't answer, she was turning the handle. Kakashi saw the handle shaking as he went to go and check it out. Kakashi was surprised because he didn't hear a single thing as he looked to see ceiling tags on the walls and on the floor. As he told Sakura to stay here as he quickly go and check it out. Meanwhile, Sasuke had interrupted Naruto's illusion as Naruto dropped the illusion. As Itachi was quite impressed for him to have ability to even fool the Sharingan. He was surprised though that Sasuke didn't charge at him blindly. As Sasuke started to fight Itachi, he was acting insane or crazy, he was calm and collective. He was holding back all of that rage. As Sasuke was seeing the situation clearly, he was no match for Itachi in this state. Naruto was right. As Naruto took on Kisame, using his Harishin, he almost turned Kisame into sushi. As he started to slice them up, but Kisame kept on regenerating his wounds. So Naruto decided to use something more devastating. As he created a clone that grabbed Sasuke and flashed away. As he told Itachi that he should run. Itachi didn't know why, but he felt like something bad was going to happen. Something that was going to put his life in jeopardy if he didn't get out of here. So he decided to jump back away from the water that Kisame had created. As Naruto was literally flying up in the air. The way the moon was reflecting off him, making him look like some deity coming from the skies. As he started to charge his three natures together and create a small beam in his hand before grabbing it, as he called it the Eye of the Storm. As he released the attack, he was devastated. Kakashi was blown away along with Sasuke, who had regrouped with him. The force sent the both of them flying back, even Itachi. When the explosion calmed down, there was a giant trench in the ground that was deep. As Kisame survived, though, but his entire right arm was torn off. Sami had to feast off of some of the chakra, but the force of the attack blew them straight into the ground. Lucky enough, they get away, but the attack ended up tearing off his arm. As it took him a while, as Sami had to feed him back all of the chakra for him to get back on good standings. As Itachi couldn't believe that Naruto was already strong, we then had a time skip as the group explained towards the Hokage as Sakura was in there. As Naruto told them that he told Sasuke about the fox inside of him. As Sertobu was getting old, he told them that, and it's time that he finally retire, knowing that Jiraiya won't take the job. He wanted him to go and find Snaddy, while Naruto and Jiraiya, as they talk about the training trip idea, as Jiraiya will be taking Naruto, and Sasuke will be taken by Kakashi. Yes, that was a sound idea. 
So with that, Naruto headed off. As he head home and find Uncle Hayate and Yuji were there. She was really happy for some reason as he saw the look on her face. As she told him that she was pregnant. He knew that they were hoping to start a family. As she smiled at him. And he hugged her after making a smart ass comment. As he told that he would be back. He was going to go with Jory on a mission. When he get back they talk. And with that Naruto left after saying his goodbyes. As Yuji would smile. Naruto was going to make a good older brother. As she then heard uncle cursing. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to make uncle meet the kid. This early. You can really influence a kid. When they're this young. As Naruto met up with Jory as they set off. To go and find Snaddy. So yeah guys. That was basically that's what left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So what is we begin this new episode? We begin this episode in a deep forest. As a man was standing there. He was up in a tree just watching. A wicked smile was on his face. Today was finally the day. That they made that bastard rule over in his grave. As they slaughter his son. This man was none other than Onido. As Oniki had turned on every attempt of him going after her. The four took Kage's son, but he would make sure that the boy died today. As he looked down, look sharp, he said, as he had an entire group with him, all of the believers that hated Minato Namikaze to their core. They wanted the man to suffer even though he's dead. Hearing that he had a son, as Onido had gathered all of them, and they were all ready to wreak havoc and vengeance. Let's move out, he said. Meanwhile, at the hidden stone, as Oniki was currently sitting at his office, doing some paperwork, the thing that every Kage is hated. As he sighed, as he signed another document, suddenly there was a knock on his door. As the knock sounded quite rushed, enter, he said. As a man burst inside, he was wearing the standard Joni uniform. Sir, Raiko was found early this morning. He was knocked out. What happened, Oniki asked. It seems like a few of our ninjas left the village. As Oniki Release a huge sigh. He knew that he would do something as stupid as this. Who was it he asked? Well, the leader of this faction that Raiko said was Onido. Onki clenched his fist. He warned that man over and over not to do anything stupid like this. He knew exactly what the man was going to do. He was going to go after. The Namikaze brat. As he sighed, he had to do something about this. This could just spark a war between Konoha and the Hidden Stone. Go and get me Kura sucking now, he said. The man nodded and left the office as Oniki banged his hand on the table. As this was the second time Onedo had went against his direct order. As an angry look came in his eye. Meanwhile, Naruto yawned as he rubbed his eye. As he looked over at Jiraiya. You haven't found her yet, Naruto asked. Well, I got a good piece of information last night, said Jiraiya. You see, the rumors are going around that the legendary sucker has been spotted. In Tansuka Gai, that is where we're going next. Wait a minute, the legendary soccer nerd asks. Well, you see my old teammate is really bad at gambling, so that is what they call her as a nickname. Oh, said Naruto, I was taking it the completely wrong way. What do you mean by Jerry eyes wide as he realized what Naruto's talking about? You better not say anything like this around her, or act the way you do. She always punched me for acting, well, like a pervert. I can't even begin to imagine what she will do with you. Huh. I bet that she will like me. And why do you think so, Jerry asks. Well, my charms, my good looks. And I'm just that better of a person than you, Erisonin. Just because you're getting quite popular with the ladies, that doesn't mean that you're better than me in any way, said Jiraiya. I mean, I don't have to buy, said Naruto. And what do you mean by that, said Jiraiya. Oh, you know what I mean, said Naruto as he started to walk off. Disrespectful, ungrateful brat, Jiraiya said. As he walked behind Naruto, scrolling the entire time. It took some time, but they finally made it to guy. Alright. Looks like a festival is going on. I'll begin the search. Why don't you go and enjoy the festival? I was gonna do that anyway, said Naruto. As Jere glared at him, this brat with his smart mouth. As Jere headed off. As Naruto went around. As he found himself at one of the festival games. As he had three. Plastic cone as he threw them. As he hit all of the targets. My my, you're quite skilled. The shopkeeper saw his eyebrow twitching. The reason being that Naruto had completely won out all of the man prizes. Huh. 
You know, you're pretty smart nerd to say. So he picked up one of the kunais. The way these kunais are made, it's incredibly hard for anyone to hit the target because you're completely unbalanced nerd to say as he held it up as he tilted to one side. So you could have get all the money that you wanted, but you never expected someone to come and be so efficient in wind control nerd to say. As the kunai started to spin on his middle finger, as Nerto created some clones as they all took up the stuffed teddy bears and all the prizes, he walked over as he saw a bunch of kids running around. Hey, he said, as he turned towards him. What's up, mister? One of them asked. Do you want these Nerto acts? What? One of the kids asked before looking behind Naruto. Whoa, how did you want so much? Well, I'm just lucky Nerto said. So you guys want them? Sure thing, one of the girls said. Will you really give us them all? Yeah, Nerto said. As... He placed on all the prizes before his clones poofed away. Well, what were those? One of the kids asked. Just a ninja trick, he said. As he started to walk off with the kids, marveling over the prizes. As Naruto made his way to a food stand, as he looked over, hmm, what's on the menu, he said. Before someone came and sat down right beside him. As he turned his head, as it was a beautiful girl. Looked like to be around his age, or maybe a year or two older. She had long blonde hair and brown eyes. As she looked at him, that was a nice thing for you to do, she said. Hmm, he said. Giving all those kids the prizes, she said. You didn't even take one for yourself. Well, Nerta said, I did. As he reached into his pouch and pulled out a small box. As he flicked it towards her, she caught it. What's this, she said. I saw that you were watching me, Nerta said. So I decided to save one of the prizes for you. She was surprised. You notice me? When? Oh, when you weren't looking, he said. As she looked down, what is it, she said. Open it and you will see. As she opened it, she was surprised to see that it was two beautiful earrings. I want that specifically for you. But you said that you... I saw you the moment I started to play the game, said Naruto. And I saw that that was one of the prizes. So I decided to win it for you. Like it? Why are you so kind, she said. You don't even know me. Can't I just be a good guy? Well, I suppose, she said. So, what's your name, she asked. Naruto, he said. Naruto Uzumaki. What about you? Rukia Henzo, she said. As she smiled towards him. Nice to meet you, Rukia Henzo. As Naruto placed his order, finally, knowing what he wanted. You want to sit and eat with me, he asked. Sure, she said, as she placed the order as well. So, where are you from, she said. As he pointed down towards his waist. As she looked down. What are you... Oh, your headband. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's on the hidden leaf, right? Yes, he said. One of the greatest nations in the elemental nations. Well, the best, actually. Why do you say that? Well, it is the best, seeing that it trampled all of the other nations. Especially the hidden stone. As he said that her finger twitched a bit. As he noticed every single movement that she was doing. What, what do you mean by that, she asked. Well... There is this great leader of our village, and he was my father. And he destroyed an entire platoon of hidden stone ninjas a long time ago. One man destroyed an entire force of ninjas. Can you believe it, Nerta asked. Oh, your father must have been strong, she said. As her tone fluctuated a bit, but not too much. Yeah, he was, Nerta said. He was the greatest. Give it a bit of time, I think he could have taken down the entire stone village by himself. Really? He was that strong? Yeah, said Naruto. So you must be strong as well, she asked. Well, I don't want to be too overconfident, but yeah. I'm strong, he said. What about you, he asked. You don't seem to be from a ninja village. No, she said, I'm just here for the festival. It's a nice festival, isn't it? Yeah, said Naruto. It's playing and having fun. A nice festival indeed. As the food came and the both of them started to eat and talk about random things. Even though they just got to know each other. As, once he finished his food before he could say anything else, Gamakichi appeared, hopping towards Naruto. Yo, Naruto, he said. Yo, what's up, Gamakichi? As Naruto looked down, Ojari told me that he found your guys' targets and he sent me to come and look for you. Let's go. I'll be right there, said Naruto as he turned back. Well, it seems like it's here we bid each other farewell, Rukia, he said. Who knows? I'll probably see you before I leave. It was nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you as well, Naruto Uzumaki, she said. As he held out his hand, she shook his hand. It was a pleasure talking to you, she said. 
You too, Nurse said, before they break contact as he headed off. Once he headed off, she got up and started to walk away as well. As she kept on walking and walking until she was at the outskirts of the village. As she made her way around the corner, as a serious expression came on her face, as a figure then landed right in front of her. So what is he doing? He's currently on a mission with Jerea. I believe it's Jerea of the Sani. What should we do? said Rukia. We cannot turn back now, the figure said. Once we find the opportunity, we will take him out. As the man made some hand signals, as some other peoples dashed forward as they spread out through Kanzukagai. Meanwhile, as Jerea was sitting down, as Nurti came inside as Gamakichi had poofed away, as he saw Jerea sitting along with Snadi and Shizuni and Tauntaun, as Nurta smiles, he walked over to the table. So you finally found her, huh? Said Nurta as he sat down. Jerea, who's the brat? Oh, come on, Nurta said. You really don't know who I am? Give me that you're out on the road. I figured that you would have gained information. Or even pick up a bingo book or something. As Snadi looked at him. Snadi sama said Shizune. It's him. Naruto Uzumaki. Oh, so you're that brat, said Snadi. Yeah, said Naruto. So has Jerry I told you yet, Nurta asked. About what she said. The offer. The offer? I was just getting to it, said Jaria. Snadi. I'm just gonna cut straight to it. The reason I'm here is because we want you to come back. Sir Toby is going to retire. And he wants you to take the position of Hokage. Snadi looked at him before scoffing. And why the hell would I do that, she asked. Because the village needs you. Huh. But I don't need it, she said. There is no way I'm going back there and taking that stupid title. That's just a waste of time and a waste of your life, she said. As she looked at Jaria, if that is all, you can leave now. I'm afraid I can't leave without making you come back with us. So you're going to force me now, she asked. Snadi, the village really needs you. I cannot take the title because you know of my mission already. Gather information. And if it's not you, it can't be anyone else. Well, I do suppose I can take it early, said Naruto. Snadi simply chuckled. You? Don't tell me you're one of those naive brats that want to become Hokage as well. Well, not wanting her to said, I will. But later down in the future, I believe you should take it for now, Bachan, he said. What did you just call me? You heard me, Bachan, he said. As she glared at him. What's wrong, Naruto said. Snadi simply scoffed. Hokage is nothing but a fool's dream. That is just a waste of time. Everyone that has become Hokage has died recently. It's only a matter of time before the old man slip up and die. As Jerry looked at her with a hard look. So you guys want me to come back and risk my life for that village that has already taken so much away from me? Hell no. Hokage positions a piece of crap she said and I won't be coming back and wasting my life on that. You know. You're quite brave, said Naruto. And why is that, asked Nadi. As Naruto got up and stand on the table before crouching down as he looked right in her face. As she stared right back at him. If you know who I am, then you know who my father is. And yet you stand there, disrespecting the Hokages, like you don't have a care in the world. What if I was to throw you right through this wall right now, he asked. Huh, Snadi smiled. Cocky overconfident brat. Do you really think you have what it takes to do something like that? As she simply chuckled. It seems like these brats nowadays are getting too way out of your league, Jaria. What have you been fooling his head with? A bunch of nonsense? You're a little too young to force me to do anything. More than less throw me through a wall, brat. But you know what? I challenge you. Do it, she said. Throw me through this wall if you think you can do it. As Nurta simply smiled at her. Outside, as a man was walking by on the street. Before suddenly, the wall break open as something fly right through it, as the thing crashed down on the ground, as the man quickly moved off. It was pretty late now so there was few people on the road and most of them were not here, seeing that the festival was going on over the other side of Tanzukagai. Snadi was taken aback. The kid actually did it. When he grabbed onto her hand, she never expected much so she didn't resist. But... For a kid so small, he's quite strong as she picked up herself. As Nurta smiles, he stepped out of the hole. I told you, he said. As Nadi glared at him. 
Well, it seems like you're a bit strong, Kate, she said. But that doesn't change anything. You're still a bit too young to do anything to me, she says. She beat up back herself. Still, underestimating me, are you, Nerta asks. As Nally just looked at him. Lady Snaddy, are you alright, Shizune asks. Of course I'm alright. Do you think that brat could have actually hurt me? As Nerta sighed. Hey, what about you just come back to Konoha and things can go on smoothly? Is that a threat, she asks. No, not real, Nerta said before unsealing something from his arm as a suitcase popped out. He didn't open it. Everyone's eyes went wide when they saw the suitcase was filled of cash. What's a brat like you walking around with so much money for, she asks. Oh, to give it to you, Nerta said. I heard you, well, really love gambling. So, what about a competition? A fight. If I win, you come back to Konoha with me. But before we go there, we go to a casino and spend all this money and try to win even more. And you also give me that necklace of yours. I heard it once belonged to the first Okage. And when you lose, Snaddy said. I give you all this money and I never look your way ever again. Snaddy smiled. Deal. Lady Snaddy, you can't be really betting that she's only be quiet. It's not like he's gonna actually win. As Shizune looked over, Jiraiya-sama, she said, aren't you going to stop this? She might hurt him. She won't be holding back so much, seeing that he just threw her right to the wall. She might hurt him bad. Well, as much as I hate to admit it, the kid is strong. Even though Snaddy doesn't clash she's been in fighting shape for quite some time now, she's still as strong as ever. I'm curious to see who would win as well. Hey, what the hell happened to my wall? The bar owner asks. How about we do this at the outskirts of the town, Nerta said. As Snaddy looked at him, don't want to get caught, said Naruto. See ya. And with that, he vanished. As Jerry looked to see the man coming as well, he wasn't going to pay for this. As he headed off, Shizune, let's go. As the both of them headed off as well. As the man came outside to see no one there, what the hell happened, he shouted. Moments later, Snaddy and Shizune made their way out there. As they saw Naruto hopping on his feet up and down, up and down. As he had a smile on his face, Snaddy simply scoffed. Who did this brat think he is? She had heard about his exploits, but she act like he wasn't on her radar, but she knew who he was. And she saw the bingo book. If this brat was as good as they say he is, she would have to put in a bit of effort and not hold back so much. He knew the hierarchy after all, and he came here before her, so he must have planted his seals all over. As she looked around, but she couldn't spot any of them. It was already night time. The moment I put you down, I get that suitcase, said Snaddy. Sure thing, Nerta said, as he walked over to Shizune. Hey, beautiful, he said. Shizune looked towards him. Me? Of course, he said. You are beautiful, you know that. As. She didn't know why, but she blushed. Would you mind holding on to this for me? As he gave her the suitcase. No, Bachan, he said. Are you ready? As he looked towards Snaddy. Snaddy simply scoffed. Let's hurry up and do this, she said. I can't wait to spend this money of yours. As Shizune rushed over towards where Jiraiya was. Are you sure he's going to be okay, she asks. Yeah, he's going to be fine. As Jiraiya was curious, he wanted to see how strong the brat was. As he also wanted to test Naruto against himself, but not now, because he would need a much bigger landscape. Because if the brat was powerful as he expected, they were going to go to a different level to destroy the place. Snaddy looked towards Naruto she narrowed her eyes, waiting for him to make the first move but he did nothing. He just smiled at her, and that smile on his face was warm and kind. As she wondered, why was he looking at her that way? Why are you looking at me like that, she asked. Well, you just seem like a nice person, Naruto said, that I would like to get to know. As my grandma or something. Why the hell would I want to be your grandma? Well, think about it. You are the granddaughter of Mito, right? Mito Uzumaki, and my mother's name is Kushina Uzumaki. They're related somehow, distant relative and all that, so that makes us family, doesn't it? Huh, well, on some points, yeah, but that still doesn't matter. Well, when you come back to Konoha, I suppose we'll have a little bonding time together, he said. Are you really that confident that you're gonna win against me, she asks. Well, we'll just have to see about that, Nerta says. He went through hand sign and then stopped. Snaddy looked around as nothing happened, as she wondered what the hell was going on. What did he just do? He then charged off towards her. 
As he was a few feet away from her, she caught back her fist and brought it down but he vanished in a flash. She knew it as she spin around, but he wasn't there either. Suddenly, the ground started to shake. The ground then exploded, water coming out now full. As Snaddy had to jump away as the water formed and stopped before the head of it turned into a massive dragon, before bearing its fang at her, before coming down a roar. Snaddy caught back her fist as she thrust it forward and punched the water dragon, blowing it to pieces like it was never even there. Well, you are strong indeed, said Naruto. Snaddy blinked as Naruto was right behind her, his back against her back. But I wonder though, said Naruto, how do you fight with your breasts that big? Snaddy eyebrow twitch. I mean, they aren't they kind of annoying? Get in your way and all that, he asked. I was wondering the same thing, Jerry has shouted. As Snaddy glared over at him. As Naruto smiled at Snaddy. So, uh, gonna tell me Naruto acts. She spin around to punch him, but he vanished again. Damn that Jutsu, he thought. But she knew that it was a matter of time before he ran out of. What the hell is she thinking? He was the Jinjuki of the Nine Tails. And from what the description of the battle was like, he was able to manifest some of the Nine Tails' power. That means it will take a while before he runs out of chakra. So she would just have to get him and put him down. As Naruto appeared right in front of her, she moved off with incredible speed. Still fast, I see, said Naruto as he dodged one of her punches. As she was surprised as he ducked so quickly. He then jumped up to kick her right in the face. As she pulled back her fist to punch him, but he vanished once more. She was then kicked in the back as he was knocked forward. As she regained her footing, she looked around. Several bright flashes went off around her. As she was receiving several hits at the same time. She was blown back as she held her hands up. Small bruises already over her body. What the hell she thought? The brat hit strong. As she looked around, she still couldn't see him. This jutsu of his is really dangerous. As she understood why Minato was so feared and the sight to flee an order for him was in the bingo book. This jutsu can kill people rather quickly. As Naruto appeared behind her once again, she swung around as she punched him, but he burst into smoke. The moment he burst into smoke, several tags dropped on the ground, making her eyes go wide. She jumped away, but the explosion blew her in mid-ear as she landed on her feet. The moment she landed, she was pulled down to the ground with great force. As she hit it hard, she didn't notice she was surrounded by four tags. What the hell? She was seriously underestimating this boy. And that was a bad thing because he was good. She started to flare her chakra to literally tear the ground under her below. Making a huge section of the ground tear open. Breaking the tags apart. As roots up ground crushing them. Breaking the link from one of them to the other. As Snaddy got back up before a punch connected in her face. She was pushed back as a fist connected in her stomach. Making her gasp a bit. Before she was knocked down to the ground once more. How was the brat getting so... Her eyes widened when she noticed. Her hand. The hand that he used to throw her right through the wall. There was a seal on it. As Nerd appeared some distance away before going through hand sign. Wind style. Wind bullets he says he took in a deep breath. Snaddy smashed her hand in the ground and pulled out a huge chunk of earth before thrusting it towards him. He fired off the wind bullets and seared the earth pieces to pieces. As the chunks fall down to the ground. As Nerd held out his hand. Let's see you block this, he said. As a Rasengan formed before he dashed forward, Snaddy infused her fist with a lot of chakra and reared it back. But suddenly, an earth dome quickly formed around Naruto, trapping him inside. Snaddy stood there for a second. He... No, this was not him. It was then, inside the dome, Naruto saw several explosive tags start to light up. Jiraiya and Shizune's eyes went wide when the dome exploded. The reinforced earth did not get blown to pieces by the tags. As Snaddy's eyes went wide, before she saw a yellow flash, as Naruto was standing right beside her. You're alive, she said. Come on, Naruto said. You think something as easy as that would have killed me, he asked. What the hell was that, she said, looking over towards the earth dome. It seems like we have some unwanted guests. As Jiraiya jumped forward, along with Shizune as well, came over towards the scene. What just happened, asked Shizune. I know you're there, said Naruto. You can come out now. As the man then stepped forward, as his body was still in the darkness, so they couldn't see his face too well. 
I knew that someone was following us. Concealed in your truck at that point to make it hard for you to be sensed. I was the one that told you, Brad, said Krama. Well, sorry for taking your praise, said Naruto. As Krama didn't say anything. Hey, Ruki and Naruto said. Rukia's eyes went wide. As she couldn't believe it. How did he know? Suddenly Naruto flashed away as he appeared right in the center of the group. Right beside Rukia. Before he grabbed the man that was at the front and flashed away back over to Snaddy. As he smashed the man down to the ground hard. So, who are you? From what I can see, you're the leader of this the group. As Jerry and Nerd's eyes. This is. He never thought it would be so quickly. But it seems like they're taking drastic measures. The hidden stone, he said. As Nerd took at the headband. So only he already want me dead already. It is not him that wants you dead. It is me. As Nerd looked down. And who the hell are you? He asked. My name is Onido, you little brat. And you would die for what your father did. So you're holding malice because of what my father did to you in a war. The war where you're supposed to kill each other. Jeez, you people are just stupid, Nurka said. Onido tried to get up, but Nurka smashed his foot right into the man's back, forcing him back down, as the rest of the stone ninjas came out. In fact, they were surrounded by all angles. Do you think you're going to escape her alive, said Onido. You know, you're really stupid. Don't you recognize who I'm with? Two of the legendary signings. And you still came after me. I wonder, do any of you have any common sense or to ask looking around? You keep on talking big. Soon enough you'll be at my feet, dying. As Nurta simply chuckle. Oh, well then. Do you think you can make that a reality, Nurta asks. As Onido clenched his fists. Kill them all, he shouted. But the ninjas around him hesitated. Because he saw the stern glares of Jiraiya. And Snaddy. It doesn't matter who they are, Onido shouted. It is just two of them. Kill Nurta stomped his foot into the man's head. Knocking him out cold. That's enough of you. Hey, Nurta says he stepped forward. You guys really think that you can go up against us? Well, not me, but them. You know that one right there? She's crazy strong. And that is none other than Jiraiya, the legendary Toad Sage. And not to mention we have Shizuni as well. A wonderful healer who know all part of the human body that could sever the strings connecting your heart and kill you in seconds. As Shizuni blushed by the praise that this boy was giving her. It seems like your brat really know how to give a speech, said Snaddy. As she saw many of the ninjas hesitating to attack. But one of them stepped forward and threw a kunai towards Naruto. As before it could reach him, the direction of the kunai turned. Before flying towards the man with tremendous force as it pierced right into his shoulder. That's one stupid mistake. Who else wants to make another one or the axe? As he narrowed his eyes. Many of them draw their weapons. It seemed that they were still stubborn. Hey, Bachan, Erosenin, can you guys stay out of this? What the hell are you talking about, Brad? said Jaraya. As Naruto smirked towards him. Well, you and the old man did warn me about this. Especially a place like the hidden stone will be after my head. But it seems like I'm gonna have to send him a message for them to understand. To not screw with me, said Naruto. As a seal came on his arm as a poof came, as his two blades appear. Do you really think that you can take them all on? asked Nadi. Well, you just sit back and see what would have happened if the fight hadn't stopped between me and you, said Naruto. Well, I wouldn't kill you, but I would have won, he said. As he narrowed his eyes at the crowd, all of them coming in closer. The first one was a man that jumped forward his blade to impale Naruto. But before he could reach Naruto, his entire midsection was torn out by several wind blades. As the man was sent sailing away back into the darkness. As Naruto jumped forward before several flashes could be seen in the darkness. Snaddy and Jiraiya and Shizune watched as many flashes just went off. They couldn't keep a track on it as flashes went off all around them. They saw the ninjas dropping like flies. Some of them were knocked out, but the ones who took it a bit farther and tried to, well, come into close combat got killed. As Snaddy watched in a maze, this boy was just like his father indeed, moving around him like a flash, as she couldn't keep her eyes on him. Rukia didn't know what the hell was going on, as she couldn't even see the boy. As she looked around, he was just so goddamn fast. She saw several of her comrades just dropping like flies. 
and she realized this was a stupid, stupid, stupid mistake to come here. A really bad mistake. As Naruto flashed in front of one of them, delivering a spinning kick so hard, the man was sent sail as he crashed into two other. As several of them jumped towards Naruto before he went to one side. Wind style, aerial pulse, he said as he held up two fingers. A massive wind pulse smashed into all of them that blew their bodies away. As Naruto went to another set of hand sign, lightning style, lightning streak, before slamming his hand on the ground as a pulse of electricity ran through and electrocuted a great portion of the ninjas as they collapsed with steam coming out of their body. As Rukia watched with shock, as Naruto got back up to his feet, Rukia looked around as all of her comrades as she came out was out. You look like you didn't want to be a part of this, said Naruto. They're all not dead, he said, looking around. But they surely made a big mistake coming after me. As Naruto stepped forward, so what will it be? Will you raise your blade against me as well? Rukia jumped her kunai. Smart thing to do, Naruto said. Before he knocked her in the back of the neck. What she didn't notice was a seal on her arm. That is why he was able to get Onido in the first place. They should know better. Never let Naruto Uzumaki touch them if he were his enemy. As Naruto was making his way back over to the group, as Onido was slowly regaining consciousness, as Jiraiya walked over, well, this was surely send him a message, Jiraiya said. As Onido saw Snelly standing over him, as he pulled a kunai, he knew that she had one terrible weakness, and that was her hemophobia. She was scared of blood. It was a good thing in this world to have information. And with this information now, he slit his palm before flashing his hand upwards, snapping rear back her fist. But the blood splashed on her. Immediately she started to shake. As Shizune dashed forward, but Onido was that joining for nothing. As he ducked under Shizune's fist, before sliding right under her guard, as he was about to punch her right in the stomach. But his hand was grabbed by a firm halt. As Naruto turned and looked Onido right in the eyes. As Onido was jolted for a second when he saw the kid's eyes, they were red, with black slits in them. Onido tried to step back but Naruto had a firm grip on his hand. Suddenly, another Naruto grabbed his other hand. Before Onido heard a spiraling sound, the next thing he knew a bright flash appeared right in front of him, and a rusting gun smashed into his gut. His body was sent sailing before he crashed into a large stone pillar. Snadi was shaking as she dropped towards the ground. Naruto pulled out a clot as he wiped the blood off her face. As she looked up at him, Come on, he said. You're the best medic ninja in the world. You can't let a little blood put you down. After all, we need you to become the next Hokage. And once I'm ready to become it as well, I want you to be there as the fifth. Congratulating me, said Naruto with a smile on his face. It was then that Snadi saw something. Two. Faces behind Naruto, they were Dan and Nawaki. As Naruto finished wiping off all the blood, as he smiled at her. It's all gone now, Naruto said. You're safe. As he hugged her, that surprised her even more. And to her surprise, it was warmed. It was like hugging her little brother, Dan. As Shizune was surprising, she saw, Snadi stopped shaking, as it was hard for Snadi to let anyone in. But this boy was doing the impossible. As Shizune smiled as Jerry stepped forward. I told you the kid was something he said. He is indeed, said Shizune with a smile on her face. As Jerry saw how she was looking at Naruto. Oh hell no, he said. This can't be, he said. What's wrong, Jerry sama she asked. N nothing, Jerry said. As Naruto break the hug with Snadi and looked at her. So you okay now? I yeah, she said to him. Well then, I believe you owe me that necklace. What? But you didn't win the fight, brat, she said. Come on. I was going to win, he said. Who told you that? I was even holding back, she said to him. Well, maybe, Nerta said. But before he could finish that sentence, she kissed him right on the forehead. As she break the kiss, I'll put my trust in you. As she stepped back and smiled. Hmm, glad to know it, said Naruto. As she took off her necklace and placed her on his neck. As Naruto looked down that smile on his face. So this means you're coming back, right? Well, if I'm truly needed, she said. And besides, we're still gonna go gambling, right? Yeah, of course, Naruto said. After all, 
well, I'm not gonna say it's hard, but it's a big responsibility to be a Hokage. So what do you say we have a little fun before we head back to Konoha? As she just smiled at him. As Jiraiya was happy, suddenly, four ninjas then landed. As a girl was at the front of the platoon. As Naruto narrowed his eyes at her, she had sharp black hair and black eyes. As she was wearing a brown vest with a red suit underneath it. And mesh leggings going down. And brown boots. As she looked around the sight that she saw. Hey, are you the backup squad to Axe? As she neared her eyes at the boy that was talking to her. It was him. The same one that she saw in the bingo book. Naruto Uzumaki. The son of Minato Namikaze. As she looked around. Did you do this? She asked in a rather dangerous tone. As Naruto stepped forward. Indeed I did. He said. You know. You should be grateful. For what? She said. As she glared at him. Well. The thing is. Your people here attacked me. And. Two Sanins. Do you know what kind of repercussion this will cause? So tell me, was your Tishikage behind this attack? She grunted. No, she said. This was all that man doing. As she looked over, as she saw Onido, he was smashed into the wall. She didn't even know if he was alive. I thought so, Nurta said. It seems like some people is still, well, pissed off about my father. Nurta then turned his head. Hey, Bachan, he said. So you're 100% gonna take Jabba's Kokagi, right? Yeah. What's up, Brad? She asked. Perfect, Nurta said. Hey, you should know. We require a sum of money and an apology from your Tsukagi himself. What? Said Kurasaki. Well, you see that lady right there. She's going to become the new Hokage. So in fact, your man just attacked the new Hokage of Konoha. So we kind of want to hear from your Tsukagi mouth himself, saying that he wasn't responsible for this attack. And a large sum of money for the injuries that... We suffer tonight. What injuries? Kurasaki asks. As Nerd looked at his finger with a small cut on it. Well, I suffer major injury, Nerd said. And I might need to go to the hospital. Kurasaki glared at him with so much anger. But she did not lash out. As it wouldn't be wise for her to do anything right here. Even though she's with three members that wouldn't say much. Because she could be killed. Not only was Jerry of the Sun in here. Snally was here as well and that boy. The rumors are that he's incredibly strong. So she wouldn't go up against him. As Naruto stepped forward. So do we have a deal he asks. I will report this back to my Chicago she said. Wonderful Naruto said. You know you shouldn't scowl so much. Because you're quite cute. As she glared at him. Hmm. As he simply walked off. Let's get going he said. As Snally looked at him. You know. You're quite troublesome, aren't you, Brad? She said. Well, it's not like we can just let this go unpunished. He attacked us for no reason. This is a sign of war. And we're letting him off by taking an apology and a sum of money. I suppose you're right, says Nadi. So, let's go have some fun before return to Konoha. Indeed, let's, said Naruto. Time skip. As Kurasaki was in front of Oniki, the man had his fist clenched. Rage, anger was twisted on his face as he was really pissed off. Where is he? asked Onki. Unfortunately, he died, said Kurasaki. As Onki was going to reward that man with death, nevertheless, as he went and did something so stupid, something so idiotic, how does he think it was right to take on a two legendary Sanins? And the son of the famous Minato Namikaze. As much as he hated admitted the man was strong, incredibly so. And those idiots went along with him. What about the survivors? They're currently in the hospital right now. Said Kurasuke. They will be punished once they're awake. Those idiots. Now I will have to send back the reports to the family members that lost someone in this stupid idiotic battle, he said. Calm down, Grandpa. I will not, he said. This is humiliating. Not only will I have to send the apology and reward them as you said that he wanted. Why do we have to do that anyways? Because, he said. Because what she asked. Orochimaru tried to fend off against Konoha. Him and his entire force was crushed within a matter of an hour. 
Even Orochimaru himself was destroyed by that kid. A war with Konoha right now wouldn't please well. Not to mention that dumbass Onido went up against the newest Okage to think that the old man is finally retiring. Huh. And worse, this Okage is a hot headed. I know her. Princess Snadi, he said. Yeah, things would be bad if we don't give what they ask. But it's still embarrassing, he said. And that cocky little brat, she said. He was the one that demanded this on behalf of his Okagi. For now, we will abide by this. Fine, she said. Meanwhile, at the hotel, Jerry got up with a groan as his head was throbbing the same way. Last night was crazy as hell. He looked over at the room. Looking over at the bed where Naruto was supposed to be, he saw the lump under the bed as he removed the sheets. But instead of seeing Naruto, he saw a large pile of money spread out everywhere. Yeah, last night they hit it big. And hitting it big came with one. Dangerous consequences, alcohol. Everyone got stone-faced drunk. Even Shizune who didn't want to participate at first. She started to drink after seeing how much everyone is enjoying himself. And then the kid went on a buzz. He just kept on downing shots after shots after shots. And Snaddy tried to outbeat him. And then she started down shots after shots. And Jerry had to keep up as well. So he started down shots after shots as well. And from there everything was a blur. As he wondered where the kid is. Pulling the door. His head hurt even more as he heard the door groan a bit. As he stepped outside. As he looked around. He couldn't see the kid anywhere. He looked over towards the room that Snaddy had booked. The door was still open. Before he went over there, he got a glass of water as he started to drink. Snaddy, he said. His voice was a bit raspy after all the alcohol. As he pushed his way inside, Snaddy, he said. As he saw that the place was a mess and cash was lying everywhere as well. They really did bring it straight back up to the hotel. No wonder the people didn't kick them out. As he then heard a groan. As Dory made his way towards the bedroom a smile came on his face he was junk still in a junk state he accidentally walked into snaddy's room she couldn't blame him right as he made his way inside the glass immediately dropped from jerry's hand and shattered on the floor naruto blinked twice as he was on something soft extremely soft he couldn't move at the moment he had made the kayubi turn off that alcohol resistance so he could get stone face drunk as he couldn't even move, that broken glass didn't even bother him because he was so relaxed. As he just rested his head down, as he put his other hand over until it dropped on something round and soft. He then started to fondle the thing in his hand. It felt quite nice before he squeezed it. He then heard a yeep as he looked over and blinked several times. Sh Shizune? Um, Naruto kan she said. Would you. Mind removing your hand? As he looked on see that he was holding Shizune's breast. He didn't realize what he was lying on. As Snaddy blinked several times before her eyebrows started to twitch. This is not what it looks like, said Naruto. Snaddy raised her hand. You goddamn pervert! As he smashed her fist right into his face. As Naruto was seen sailing right in the wall before collapsing down. Naruto contested Shizune as she was over. Are you... As he was out completely cold. Snaddy sama, I think you overdid it a bit. That's what the brat deserves, she said. As she looked around. As she then noticed Jerry at the door. What the hell are you doing here, you pervert? Were you peeping on us? Well, I'm the one that's supposed to be asking questions. Why were you and Shizune sleeping with the kid? As soon as they blink, sleeping? Didn't he crawl in here? No, I saw you guys sleeping together. Shizune, what the hell happened? Um, I don't really remember, she said. Oh yeah, we got drunk. And we came up here, we were laughing for some reason. I don't remember the joke. But seems like we all fell asleep. Nerutokan didn't do anything wrong. Well, no matters. I am sure that the kid will do something in the future to piss me off. That is for when he pissed me off in the future, she said. So I won't punch him in the future. I'll give him one free getaway shot, she said. 
Meanwhile, at the hideout, a dark, unknown cave. So you're telling me that he's far stronger than it seems. Said the leader of the Akaski. Yes, said Kisame with a grunt. But the kid caught me off guard. Next time, it won't be so easy. Itachi, what about you? What were you doing? He had company. I was taking care of the company, said Itachi. The leader sighed. This was becoming more troublesome and dangerous. If the Kayubi Jinjutsu was already strong, how stronger would he get in the future? But it doesn't matter. He was a god after all. Anything comes his way, it will surely get put down. I don't want our organization being spread worldwide yet. We will go under wraps for three years. Until Zetsu managed to get ever information all the other Jinjulkis. You guys can go out and catch bounties. But just be on the down low. Once Zetsu get all the information, then we will strike. The world is not ready to know about the Akas yet. Am I understood? He asks. As all of them gave a nod. Alright, you're all dismissed. Some of the holograms start to disappear. Meanwhile, the hidden rain. As Pain looked down the village, he heard a voice behind him to think that he was this strong. Able to face off against Itachi and Kisame, well, Kisame mostly, said Conan. It doesn't matter how strong he is, he's still human. And once the time comes, I will take him down myself if needs be. I am a god after all, said Pain. But guys, be in this right here. For the next part of this or not new, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notifications they posted. Remember to share to all of your friends in your social media platform. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.